Okay, I'm back. I've got my uh, caffeine here next to me. I'm on call, which is uh, the life of the network engineer. But I'm going to put together a video here, try to keep it as brief as possible, but it's going to cover uh, NetFlow usage. So uh, clearly, I've got myself a uh, better graphics designer. Uh, this title screen is impressive, to say the least. Whoever designed it uh, definitely got some skills in the old Photoshop. Um, not going to really associate a uh, simulated ticket with this one, uh, uh, but I'll give you a kind of a backstory on the, where NetFlow comes into play and how this comes up. Uh, so, uh, typically, uh, with the, what you're going to see requests for is uh, to identify why uh, certain circuits or internet connections are being maxed out, uh, if that unfortunately is the case. Now, um, what uh, you can also do as far as tools that you have in your your inventory is implement a good quality of service policy uh, and use policy maps to identify key traffic such as uh, voice video um, other things that are more prone to uh, sensitivity to packet loss and jitter and you can give them priority as far as bandwidth goes and, and drop some of your more mundane traffic um, but NetFlow gives you the ability to identify what is causing your uh, links to be saturated, um, and it uh, it's a uh, it's a good way for you to be able to provide metrics to management and, and kind of show exactly what's causing the problem, or uh, for troubleshooting purposes for you to work with uh, maybe the server guy or um, one of the systems guy, and uh, you know work on on killing a connection that maybe is rogue and shouldn't be happening. So. Let's go ahead and jump on over to GNS3. Um, the, the quick video I did just before this one, if you want to check it out first, is how do you tie GNS3 into your real, um, kind of your host machine that it's running on. And the reason I did that is so that uh, applications here like TFTP um, and NetFlow, uh, the NetFlow uh, collector, which is what we're going to get into here shortly, um, those I have running on the actual workstation that GNS3 is on. Um, that way I can just export from uh, R1 here through the cloud over to my workstation. It's going to make it pretty easy for me to collect metrics and uh, and files through TFTP that way. TFTP I'm just going to use to actually generate traffic on this uh, this attempt. Uh, um, excuse me. Um, so, moving right along here. The main things you need as far as NetFlow goes is to configure NetFlow on your network devices, on interfaces. Uh, you can do ingress and egress on your interfaces, and that's going to uh, allow you to start monitor or your, your device rather is going to start monitoring the traffic that's coming and going. And then um, you need to set up the NetFlow uh, export to a remote device. So wherever your NetFlow collector is, when I say by NetFlow collector, uh, right now I'm just running a free um, SolarWinds tool. So this one's rather limited. Um, as far as capture time and amount of interfaces and everything like that, uh, but there are full-blown commercial suites that allow you to collect for uh, long, long-term and on uh, you know multiple interfaces. And this will let you see some track or uh, some traffic metrics uh, over time with history. So this is the actual collector. This is what we're exporting to from our device, and then we have to set up ingress and egress on those interfaces. So I'll get into showing you that um, with the cloud connection I'm able to also connect to my router through um, a remote program. So for example, uh, PuTTY, something along those lines. So now that I'm remoted into R1 here, although it's got a different actual host name, uh, first thing I'm going to do is go into my, uh, my WAN connection there, pointing towards the cloud. There really isn't much setup on this device right now, but uh, we're going to go over to PAS00, which is the WAN connection, simulated WAN connection. And we're going to do IP flow egress and IP flow egress in and out. Um, that's all we really need to do on that actual interface. Next thing we're going to do is from config T, we're going to go ahead and do IP flow export or IP portal export and then uh, you can always walk your way through these commands with question marks if you forget the uh, the 
particular syntax for everything, but destination is going to be the IP address of the server that you're running the netpool on, or the netpool collector, I should say. And that is that SolarWinds software that I just showed you. Um, but your software may vary, and there are actually quite a few resources for free netpool collectors out there. Uh, this I just found with a quick Google search uh, a couple of uh, five free netpool analyzers, for example, for Windows. And uh, they talk about how the different vendors, such as uh, Juniper and uh, HP, they call their NetFlow different things. So Juniper's is actually JFlow, um, HP and Fortinet use SFlow. Um, so just keep that in mind depending on what kind of uh, devices that you have. And we are getting spammed by this website here. So uh, it shows you kind of a, this is what the Solar Ones one looks like. Here is uh, Manage Engine NetFlow. Uh, here's NTOP. Um, and they all have pros and cons. Uh, there's usually limitations with the free ones. Typically, you're going to see that most of the NetFlow, the good NetFlow collector software, is going to be commercial and, and require money just because of um, how in depth this software is and what it, what it does here. So, uh, let's go back over to uh, our router. Finish off this export command. Um, we're going to, I think the only thing it needs now is a port. Now, this port. Uh, 2055 is usually what I see as the standard, and um, uh, that's going to depend on what software you're running. Although 25, 2055 may very well be the actual protocol standard for NetFlow. Um, I should know off the top of my head. I should have looked up ahead of time, but um, so that's what we're going to use for uh, the port for this one. So 055. I think that's all we really need to put in, to be honest, for basic setup for export. So at this point, this device is ready to send data over to our server, or our, uh, our collector. Um, and it's doing that through the cloud connection in GNS3. The only other thing we need to do is um, your NetFlow collector needs to have SNMP access to your devices. Um, so if you're familiar with SNMP, you know there's a couple different versions. One, two, Charlie, three. Um, we're going to use... We're going to use three. Three gives you the most privacy and security as far as SNMP traffic goes on your network so that it can't be uh, caught out on the wire and um, utilized maliciously. Three gives you privacy and, and all that good stuff. So um, <clears throat> for three, oops, I should stay in it. For three, what I'm going to do first is uh, SNMP server uh, group and then we'll call it, uh, we'll call it flow and it's V3 and we're going to do the uh, privacy attachment. Now, now no auth, auth, and privacy, those are different methods that you can set it up. Uh, you see in here, um, no auth is no auth, no privacy. Uh, auth actually gives you uh, authentication but no privacy, and privacy gives you author authentication and privacy. Um, and so we're going to go with privacy. Next thing we're going to do is an SNMP server user, and uh, this is what we're going to put in. These are the credentials here we're going to put in. Uh, on our netflow collector, so I'm going to call it uh, flow user. And this is the group name here, so flow is the group we just made. We're going to do v3. Um, so for the authentication, we're going to use shot uh, for this. And uh, I think next it wants a password, so I'm just going to use Cisco. For the privacy, however, um, for both of these, really, you need to keep in mind that whatever your collector is, it needs to be able to handle that. So, for example, if I go in to add a new device into this NetFlow collector, I go to SNMP version 3, I go to add a new one, you can see that for authentication, I have MD5 and SHA. So, both of those would have worked out of that iOS selection I had. But for encryption, I only have 56-bit uh, DES and AES-128. So, I do not have three DES, triple DES, uh, as they call it. And you'll, you'll see that that is an option in here. So just be careful with what you're setting up for your SNMP users. Uh, make sure that it's going to jive well with your collector. So I'm just going to use regular DES then for this one and uh, give it a, the same thing with Cisco. Those are obviously not very secure, but uh, in a production environment, you would want to use upper lowercase symbols numbers. So we now have our SNMP user as well. Um, that's pretty much it, honestly. We've got it set up on the interfaces. We've got an SNMP user for our collector to be able to utilize as well. And we have an exporter set to go to our collector on the specified port that it's listening on. Um, I am done in this device. I'll come back and generate traffic in there, but uh, uh, but uh, that's pretty much all we need to set up on the actual uh, Cisco device itself. So username we made was, um, uh, what was it, flow test, flow user. 
sad. I literally just typed it two seconds ago. What was it? Full user. Okay. Full user. Shawan. Cisco. Uh, DES56. Dez. Cisco. Okay. And we are going to use that credential set on the IP address of the router. And go ahead and store those credentials. And you can see that the router now showed up in the collector. So um, we should start seeing traffic show up in the uh, fast 0 port as traffic is sent. Now, um, I mean, you can see the topology. There isn't much going on. There. We're already getting some traffic. There isn't much going on here. So this is going to be a really, really lightweight simulation of what you're going to see on an actual production network. Production network, you're going to see uh, some good things. Uh, as far as um, a lot more content, I should say. So what you can what you can do is uh, uh, there we go. That's equal. All right. Um, in the iOS, there are some. There's a method where you can, uh, it's a uh, blue show IP cache flow. I'm not sure if I'm, if this, wait a minute. Okay, there we go. It took me a second. Um, so IP cache flow, show, show IP cache flow is going to show you some of the metrics that are currently being exported over to the collector. I just want to show you there is a way within the actual CLI to see some of this data um, without it actually going to an external piece of software. So you you are going to be able to see some of the connections that are going on. Source and destination uh, port over here on the right, these are in hexadecimal, you have to convert them over. Um, you can use your built-in uh, Windows calculator to do that. So port 800 alpha, if I switch over to programmer, or scientific. No, it was programmer, sorry. And go from hexadecimal. What was it? Eight zero. Let's do that one. Charlie Delta six three. Charlie Delta six three. Switch that over to decimal. Um, you can also use uh, you know a conversion program or Google it. Google the conversion over to decimal. Five two five seven nine. So this is just kind of a random high end port. Um, so let's do the other side of that one then. Destination port zero zero alpha one zero. Oops. Let's go back over to hex. Zero zero. All right. Well, um, I get that it doesn't want to because it's um, two zeros. Obviously, you wouldn't want that example. Sorry. Uh, there's probably a way to do that, but that's another high end port six nine eight nine DB three three. Uh, let's clear that out. Go back to hex DB three three. 56. That's another high. Anyway, um, so you get the general idea, though. You'll be able to convert source and destination ports over and see uh, if it comes out to 80 or you know 21 or some sort of common port. You're going to know immediately what service that is. Um, that'll let you from the CLI kind of see these different connections that are going on, um, and it'll also show you the top protocols uh, that that it's seeing go across the network. Um, you can also do top, you can configure top talkers, top certain amount of talkers, and it will tell you who the top, say, five IPs are that are talking across this link. And that'll give you an idea of who's eating up your bandwidth. So now that the CLI, you saw how to do a show uh, IP cache flow, I'm going to go ahead and get that out of here. And we're going to go to the collector itself. The collector itself now has seen a little bit of traffic. We're going to start capturing on that interface, that's zero, 00. And let me shrink this down to where you can see it a little better. Um, at first, it's not gonna it's not gonna have any metrics. You saw that error message there for a second. Uh, it takes a second for it to start seeing some data. And I'm gonna actually go over here and uh, try and generate a little bit of traffic. This is obviously a poor example. Uh, the other thing I could do, I guess, is try and do a TFTP poll. I was having issues with that earlier, and I don't think it's gonna be successful, but. Um, All right, we're starting to get some stuff. I'm going to go ahead and disregard the TFTP push or pull for now, but we could have done that as well. Um, so now you can see, you know, World Wide Web. 
a um, couple different protocols that I'm not as familiar with. When you're on an actual production network, you'll see a lot more things that kind of um, look familiar to you. So if you have any security software on your clients, uh, perhaps you'll see that talking to its server and whatnot. These are just the uh, the protocols here, and you can see in a nice graph how much uh, bandwidth each one is kind of taken up over time. Um, you can see down in the bottom right corner here uh, the actual input, ingress and egress uh, traffic, um, the uh, the current amount that's coming through. Um, the big thing with uh, using NetFlow to say identify a bottleneck, for example, is uh, you can go into conversations. I don't have Top Talkers set up. Oh, uh, it may pull it automatically in the uh, collector, but on the iOS, I know you have to configure it. But um, conversations, uh, for example, you can break it down by a certain IP address and who they're doing all of their uh, different sessions with, what I, uh, what uh, ports and protocols that are going on, and traffic percentage. So 55%, 24%. And you can use this alongside your QoS policy. So if you are uh, actively dialing in your policy maps, then you can keep an eye on your NetFlow collection and uh, watch as that traffic starts to get uh, um, shaped down at your uh, your edge WAN connection there. So it'll show you domains, it'll show you different endpoints that are associated, um, and it's just a really useful tool for you to kind of identify where your bandwidth is getting eaten up on your network. Um, so again, this is the this was using all free and open source software. This is the SolarWinds uh, real-time NetFlow analyzer. This is their freeware version, which is limited in time it can capture and in interfaces. Um, used alongside GNS3, uh, where we just connected to uh, um, my production device here, where I actually have this software running. So you can set this up yourself and try it out. Uh, I highly suggest it in a production environment for you to see kind of what is uh, what's causing all the traffic. Even if you're not maybe experiencing an overload on any circuits or uh, your internet connection, it will kind of just let you see what the majority of the traffic is. Um, and uh, I hope this has been informative for you. Uh, feel free to leave any questions or comments, and thanks for watching.